All right, welcome back, Final Fantasy XIV. We're heading on back into town, and there is another. There's another blue quest plus right here. Hey, Mazi has it for us. Knocking on heaven's door. Oh. Okay. Amaziz has been asked to keep an eye out for you. Okay. You're a tick man, correct? The one Rasho is looking for, if I'm not mistaken. He told me that if you showed up, I should send you to Kosai in Surf. Why? Bugger if I know. Nobody tells me anything around here. He'd be better off asking Kuza himself. Da 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 da. All right, polar bear. Let's give him a snowflake and let's be off. So it's all heaven on high. Well, that's where we're headed. That thing is he knocking on. I hope we don't have to climb that. Maybe after this episode, we'll fly up to the top and look down. I wonder if we'll be able to. Ooh, one doesn't know. How long does it take to get to heaven on a flying polar bear? These are all questions we all need answers to. But I cannot tell you the answer. But stick around to the end of the episode and we will find out. Where you at? There you are. Zai. Ah, you must be Tickman Boko. Rasho speaks very highly of you. In fact, there's something that we should like to discuss. All that will be revealed in due course. But I feel a change of venue is in order. Pray, wait for us at the foot of heaven on high. All right? We need to go up to the foot of heaven on high. this thing. Is it made out of stone? It sure looks like technical stone, like it used to be metal, but now it's rusted and corroding. Interesting. Alright, let's wait for him. Waiting, waiting. Oh, finally, we can look up. This day. I haven't been able to look straight up in forever. And you still can't see all the way up. Magnificent, is it not? But as you may have guessed, we did not call you here to admire the view. Oh, hey, fellas. Rather, we would like you to help us explore heaven on high. Perhaps it is best we explain from the beginning. Kayusu, if you would be so kind. A few nights passed while I was rearranging supplies in one of the storerooms. I happened across a trap door that I had never noticed before. Upon opening it, I found a tunnel leading underground. The passage led to a chamber lined with an array of bizarre machinery, all glowing and humming. It's my better judgment, I reached out and touched one of the devices and was enveloped by a blinding light. Next thing I knew, I found myself in a series of ornate hallways and I was not alone. There were hideous fiends with gashing fangs and grasping claws everywhere I looked. It was all I could do to run for my very life until I chanced across the shining orb as I approached it, I was once more blinded by light. We found him sprawled out in the hidden room below the storage shed. After he came to and shared his experience, we examined these machines he found. It turns out they are from, they are a form of a gateway that leads inside to heaven on high. And therein lies the problem. What? 
Being from Azorzia, you may not be aware that this tower and the island on which it stands are regarded as sacred. It is believed that when that Kamai first came to the Blue Sea, they created on Koro and built heaven on high as a stairway connecting the earth and their home high above the clouds. The devout are loath to set foot on on Koro for fear of incurring the wrath of the Kemai. To enter into the tower would be an even greater blasphemy. We Confederates, on the other hand, come and go as we please. Since no one else has settled on this island, we claimed it for ourselves. It takes more than a few silly folk tales to scare us, after all. But imagine what might happen if people who did set store by such tales learn we have been poking around in heavens on high. They heard we were climbing that this are claiming that this holy ground was in fact filled with hellish beasts. So you want me to exterminate? At best, they may never trade with us again. And the most fanatical among them might be so bold as to come here with anger in their hearts and murder in their eyes. However, we dare not ignore the threat posed by the denizens of the tower. If Kyoza could escape, what's to stop those creatures from doing the same? Therefore, I would conduct an investigation quietly. If we dedicate a large number of confederates to storming the tower, it wouldn't be long before people start asking questions. On the other hand, few would notice the absence of an outsider such as yourself. And when the fighting starts, you alone are worth a dozen or more of my best men. One more thing. Strange magics govern the tower, suppressing the strength of all who enter. But if anyone can overcome such hindrances, it is you. For what it's worth, I shall be on hand to provide what little assistance I can. I will leave the exploration of the tower in your capable hands. Oh. Fuso may not be fighting sort, but his knowledge of heaven on high should prove useful. I will also be operating the teleportation device to provide entry to the tower. Thankfully, you will be much better prepared than I was to face the horrors that lurk within. When you are ready, come and find me by the store room. So in the original one, there's this pit where the magician sits and uh, you can, you go down. I featured the that in one of my, one of my things. But in this one, instead of going down to the center of the earth, you're going up. So let's speak with Kanzua again. I take it your preparations are complete. Before you enter heaven on high, I should tell you more about the magics that Ratio mentioned. Uh, the scouts that were, that we sent inside, all claim they could feel the very ethos being sad, and that their weapons were somehow robbed of their potency. Even the most forceful blows did little more than graze their enemies. Huh, you're familiar with such a phenomenon? Yep. Uh, intimately, yes, we are, because we, our weapons and armor, we had to build up. Is that so? How strange. This kind of enfeebling magic can only have been activated by, ahem, excuse me, I have a tendency to ramble. This is hardly time for me to start hypothesizing. Luckily, there's a way to circumvent the tower's magical field to some degree. Please take this with you. It will allow you to weld what is known as an Empyrean Ether Pool weapon. Alright, thank you. 
It was the veil discovered inside the tower and slowly channels a person's ether into the form of a blaze. Spell casting to or whatever you have. The longer an Imperial Etherpool weapon is used, the more powerful it becomes. I must stress, however, that even with one of these weapons, progress from one floor to the next would be far from easy. Explosion will largely involve traveling upwards using the teleportation devices inside, which are likely to be heavily guarded. Well, considering the dangers you will face, we have decided to restrict the investigation to the lower levels for the time being. Once you've reached the 13th floor, please report your findings to Rasho and myself. We shall then discuss whether it is safe to continue past that point. Although we shan't be joining you on the expedition, we Confederates are eager to lend you our support. If there's anything you need, do not hesitate to ask. And that's it. Knocking on Heaven's Door is complete. Heaven on High now accessible. You now have access to Heaven on High. You may enter solo or in a party of up to four players. When speaking with Kusetsu, you'll be given the option to enter either a fixed party or a match party via the matchmaking system. You must be a Disco or War Magic of level 61 or above to participate. Players will start at level 61 regardless of the current class or job level. Furthermore, only Empyrean, Ethical Arms, and armor specific to Heaven on High may be used. Other details can be had by speaking with Kunsella. Alright, so yeah, it's just like that other dungeon we was doing. We just Confederate Appraiser. Brought me Sacra Two Trinkets to inspect, have you? Appraise a piece of a cursed board. We don't have any. What else she got? Ask about that cursed word. According to Kuzu, Heaven on High holds a host of magical bound treasures. Thing is, you can't even tell what's inside until you open the sack. And to do that, you have to dispel the magics that bind it. Lucky for you, I'm a dab hand when it comes to breaking enchantments. Exploring Heaven on High, players will occasionally find pieces of a cursed hole. Treasures sealed by powerful magics. You can ascertain the value of these pieces by presenting them to the Confederate Appraiser. Alright. So our strength is zero for arm and armor. Name, corpse dancer, to man poker. Let's go ahead and enter. Let's see what it's all about. You set your progress to bay in your fixed party. Give your scores. You must scores. Zero. Alright. Enter heaven all high. Let's do slot one. Let's enter with a match party. Let's do it. Five minute wait. Oh my goodness. Alright, well, thanks for joining me. My name's Tick. Come on back tomorrow. And we are going to start a Heaven on High mission. Till then, y'all take care.